Uh, well, I've always enjoyed reading. I've been very curious. And so for me, trying to understand connections and things and history and culture and language um, hasn't really been motivated by profession, but just personal interest. So in becoming an English teacher, I, I took a path that was just very natural for me, a way that I could keep reading and learning and um, help others to do the same thing, which is also part of my personality. So um, nowadays I often hear this advice given to students that they should do what they love and the rest will follow. But in my experience, it wasn't like this at all. My family, my teachers um, did not give this advice. Uh, in fact, when I was in high school, I once did this careers project in which I interviewed all of the English teachers in my school because I was thinking of becoming an English teacher. And every single one of them told me not to become a teacher. Uh, and they all had different and very interesting reasons, which I can still remember. So that influenced me a lot. And um, I went to university as a business major. But on my first day, my first class, I sat through something called business calculus. And uh, after I left that class, I went straight to registration and I dropped all my business classes. And I signed up for English and philosophy courses because I had an epiphany. I realized, well, you only live once and I should go for something that was meaningful to me. What's your teaching philosophy? Wow, teaching philosophy. Um, I, think I, I think that's very profound and I don't really have a coherent teaching philosophy. But I, I think there are principles that I like to follow, muses, that have inspired me. Uh, one of these um, may be just to follow the inspiration that started it all, which is to keep searching for meaning uh, and encourage my students to keep pursuing what is very meaningful to them. Now, my students have been very diverse from many different countries and cultures like Papua New Guinea and the United States and China, Hong Kong, the diversity is, is really incredible. I would say that one aim of my life, more than any aspect of my career, has actually been to understand the family of mankind. Um, but that also fits very well into my life as a teacher. I feel quite connected to all of my students in this search for meaning. So another principle that is very important to me as an English teacher and a teacher of teachers is to focus on the learning process as much as possible and try to improve that. So it's quite obvious, I think, that if you learn how to learn well, that will serve you and your community much better than just accumulating truckloads of knowledge and information which any library or hard drive could do better. So I like to focus on this human aspect of the learning process, uh, believing in my students, actually knowing that every student is capable of learning very well, even if differently. Um, so for me, uh, a learner and a learning-centered classroom is, is not really a methodology or a pedagogy, it's just what education is all about. So can you give any practical examples of how you do that? Yes, sure. Well, without really setting out to do it, in fact, almost by accident, I've become very interested in the uses of IT in teaching and learning. I was never really a technology person, but I gradually discovered... Really? You're really. always a technology person? No, no. It's just recently that I've developed this interest because I've discovered that, ironically, really, that educational technology can be very powerful in helping students to connect with their teachers, with each other, and with the world outside. And um, it can focus their efforts and outcomes of learning in ways that would almost be impossible in the traditional classroom. So, of course, technology is just a tool, um, and it can be used to improve communication skills, learning and interaction, uh, just as easily as it can alienate us from each other. So it's up to the teacher to make the difference.
So, for example, in our introduction to linguistics class, my friend Li Xun Wang and I were um, among the first in the world to ask students to write their own textbooks. For almost 10 years, our students have collaborated in expert groups to write wiki textbook chapters. So at the end of each course, the students themselves have written a complete textbook on the subject. Um, they work collaborating very closely with their groups. They do it online. Um, they get feedback and comments from their classmates. And they're very deeply engaged with their fellow students, with the topics, with the teachers, um, and I don't think that would be as possible at that level without IT. So another more recent example is my use of blogs as a kind of teacher or classroom LMS, learning management system. Um, this, I think, fills an important gap because at the university we have Moodle, um, and we use Moodle, but most primary and secondary teachers in schools in Hong Kong won't have Moodle in their schools. So a simple blog can serve as a real virtual classroom that allows me to share content, conversation, interaction with activities with students anytime. It's convenient for them, it's easy, it's very natural. We interact through these activities, commenting on posts, um, working on common texts with their classmates um, in ways that for most students is, is easier than working face to face. So um, the students can choose whatever the best time is for them to work and spend as much time or little time as they need doing these activities. It's very adaptable. And by also by teaching using this platform and these methods, um, all of which I've learned just by trying them out and trying to refine and improve and adapt them. My students, who will also be teachers or are teachers, also learn how to use them with their students, and I'm trying to encourage them to learn by doing. So I could say that um, constantly changing my approach, trying to develop and refine them, um, learning by trial and error is another one of these principles of my approach to teaching. Do you have any other examples of using uh, technology in your own teaching? Um, well, um, just now I'm trying out something that's very new to me, which is making a MOOC. So several of my colleagues in the faculty and I are launching a MOOC called The English You Didn't Learn in School which is a title that I really love. Um, so if I had one goal for my students and schooling, it would really be to break down the walls that create the illusion that schools are not relevant to life um, or the real world. Um, and unfortunately, as teachers, we sometimes perpetuate this illusion. So um, I think we should embed learning deeply in the real world, um, in the skills that our students will need as citizens, um, as members of their community. And uh, the more that we as teachers can understand the students' real lives and the needs of the world that they will be living in later, uh, the more that we can help them and make their education relevant. At the same time, outside of English, it's outside of England, not outside of English. Developing this MOOC has, for me, been a great opportunity to collaborate with my colleagues and practice some of these skills of creating teacher-made digital content, um, something that I think all future teachers really need to be aware of and comfortable with. So Zhuangzi and Huizhi were walking by the river when Zhuangzi said, see how the fish swim around wherever they please. That's what fr fish really like. They're so happy. So I'm also trying to practice what I preach, um, learn by doing, understand my students very well, collaborate closely with colleagues, and learning by trial and error. Um, and of course, keeping an open mind.